Hey everybody, it's Lily Hope here, Chilcat Weaver, Raven's Tail Weaver, artist working in Juneau, Alaska. Thanks for joining in for the Alaska Heritage Institute's virtual demonstrating artist session. This one we're going to talk about um, a day in the life of a Chilcat Weaver and or a day in the life of an artist. So I like to spend my first part of the day with a cup of coffee or black tea, chai, I really like that, yogi tea, like that too. Um, something caffeinated, and uh, I often set up my kids with a, my little pony, something or other that they can play with, or bust out the Play-Doh so I know they're going to be occupied for 20 minutes, because I have five kids, and uh, three of them are six years and under, so I get them started with a little morning snack, some toast and jam, and then I get to open my journal. And I really prefer to do this to get the angst and like extra stuff out of my head before working. So I use a Moleskine, Moleskine notebook and I will free write in this for two or three pages or 10 to 15 minutes or usually through like one or two interruptions for my kids. That's kind of how I gauge it. Like once they've interrupted me twice, I'm kind of done. Um, so I do that and then drinking my coffee, of course, maybe I'm having toast also and when I'm feeling especially um, Motivated I will also draft up a little note to someone who has helped me recently in my creative life or um, someone who's made a pur purchase recently or a commissioner and I like to send them a little hand done card of some of my work so this is a little weaving I did Taku Sunrise and this is some leggings that my apprentice and I did um, long ago and so I will I had these printed Vista print actually and have the little information on the back and everything giving credit to my photographers all that um, I like to hand write cards that is really motivating and uplifting for me to connect with people and it's unexpected. People don't expect that stuff. So handwrite your things and give the gratitudes to the people who are supporting you because that's huge. You are an artist because of the people who are buying your work, right? So send them things they don't expect. That's one, one thing I love to do in the morning, in my day, my ideal day in the life of, an, of a weaver. The other thing is um, I will go to my little notebook Yes, it has Chilcat designs on it. I love it so much. And I keep track of anything that I've spent money on. So um, I write down like yesterday's expenses. Oh, geez, I got a coffee, but I'm not doing that anymore. I don't get to go get coffees anymore, so I can't write those down. Um, so anything that I spent money on and like note whether it was my business expense or my personal expense so that when it comes tax time, I can just like go through and highlight all of my business expenses and say, oh, look, that was expenses like metals for my jewelry. Um, so do that. And I like to do that every day, if not every other day. Um, that makes it hugely easier later. So day in the life of an artist. I uh, leave my house and come to my little studio just a few blocks away from my house. Leave my five kids at home with my husband. Thank you very much for watching them and keeping them alive. And I will come and sit at the loom for a little while. Now, it's not a simple process to get to the loom because like I said, those morning pages, if I don't do them, I'm gonna come to my studio and uh, get on my computer and check my emails and do Facebook for half an hour and then all of a sudden an hour is gone and I've only replied to one email and I'm down the rabbit hole of social media. So trying to avoid social media or setting a timer for what I'm allowed to do, like 20 minutes, and then I have to come to my loom and weave. Uh, that is pretty powerful for me. Um, so sometimes it is necessary to tune in to my emails and respond to those before getting to the work because this takes my whole mind. Like I can't have other distractions happening while I'm working on my loom. I really need my mind to be clear. So if I can't get to my emails beforehand, I will come to my loom and put my hands in the work and uh, I get really, really close to my weaving and sometimes even put my forehead to the weaving and I say, um, Jenny, that's my mom's teacher, Jenny and Mama Clarissa Rizal, I'm here at my loom today. I've got a lot on my mind and I really need your help to get, get me out of the way. I'm grateful to my family for watching my, my children. I'm grateful my kids are healthy 
my, my aunt is standing by, my sister, and uh, guide my hands and let me be here present with this gift. I'm so grateful for this and uh, lead the way. Let me get out of the way. So after that gratitude session and thanking all the people that have supported me, you know, it's, it's usually just short like that, short and sweet, and to the point. So that helps me kind of slough off the like heavy other stuff, all the 50,000 other things we're supposed to take care of, um, bills and responding to emails and doing that one show and did you make your collage and all that stuff. So that is necessary in my day. Then I'll usually sit here 90 minutes, maybe two hours straight uh, without getting up and hopefully get some really, really good weaving in. Then I'll take a little break, uh, walk around, get up and walk and go over to my little tea station and make some tea uh, while the tea is boiling, you know, it's like I'm like checking Facebook, social media. That's my like gift to myself of like focus for an hour or two, then you can have five minutes of social media while your water's boiling, that kind of thing. Um, then I will come back to the loom for another hour, hour and a half, and then I go home and nap my littlest person. So I get to have lunch with my kids, check in how their homeschool is going, um, put the littlest person to sleep, and then I leave again once I set up the afternoon activities with my kids and my husband. So that is then when the afternoon comes, of course, I'm back at the loom, or if other things have happened, because while I'm putting the little person to sleep, I get about 20 minutes to respond to emails or draft up the next thing that I'm working on. So if during that time I get an order or notice that something is pressing, I'll come back to the studio, check in on my computer and respond to stuff or, you know, spend an hour making a pair of earrings or half of a pair of earrings, you know, not, not actually finishing them, but baby stepping the other things that need to be taken care of. And then I'll come back to the loom for another couple of hours. This is my pressing project right now. So this kind of takes precedence over all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, um, on my fun days, fun days, the days that my kids are kind of engaged, uh, willing to do art with me, I'll do my morning pages, right? I'll work on my notebook, send a couple postcards to people, draft those up. And then I invite my kids to participate in making collages or little paintings with me. And that's kind of my um, further getting the angst out of like being able to come to the big work without layers of, of like, oh, I didn't make one other thing today. I didn't finish a piece of art today. So finding that working on monumental artwork is so like, it's really heavy, heavy, heavy to like have this whole thing like weighing on my shoulders and somebody's gonna wear it soon. But having that whole massive thing to do and not getting the like instant gratification of finishing something I really like doing smaller paintings or collages that like take an hour or two or three to make and um, help me feel accomplished in making a work. It's also a practice in um, building a body of work that you can put up for sale, that you can put up on your website, that you can say, you know, in the last three months I've made 30 pieces of art. Not all of them were weavings, but I've made 30 pieces of art. So. Think about that in your practice, if you're an artist or if you're just starting out, um, think about that. What is the thing that you can do once a day or every other day where you are starting and finishing an entire piece of work? And you can say, I made 10 pieces of art this month, you know, um, for your body of work, whatever that can be. Maybe it's jewelry, maybe it's a smaller weaving, you know, however that comes for you. So I'd encourage you to do that. and. That's, that's really my day. At, at the end of my day, four or five o'clock, I will go home to my family. I sometimes work after they fall asleep and weave, you know, the other side of my earring if I didn't finish it and watching something on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And uh, that's, that's it. That's, that's really it. Oh, and once a week, I have my studio manager on the phone now, virtually, or, um, you know, used to be that she would come and hang out in my studio with me while my hands are moving. Um, she would support me in whatever administrative stuff I need to do, assembling, you know, kits for the next class or, you know, prepping warp for the next project, or she even prepped my collage pages. So she's got the, like, 
the mounted piece on the nice watercolor paper. So all those things. So once a week I do kind of split my mind and work on stuff and work with my administrator assistant, otherwise known as my studio manager. So get one if you're serious about continuing to make art. Find the people who will support you. I already said that in another video, but I'm, I'm big on that, that you can make much more work when you have support. All right, the day in the life of the weaver, day in the life of an artist. We'll see you guys again. Thank you so much, the Alaska Heritage Institute and all the staff in the arts and media department for supporting this work. And uh, we'll see you again. Bye-bye.